It doesn't matter. But for example, Professor Action say, why inequality matter for growth? Right? Misa says. She said excessive inequality is bad for growth. But the, what does the excessive mean? You we also have right. Nepal so it's still very towards the right corner. But for Professor Kurnitz curve, Kurnitz said, an early phase of industrialization, there will be rising inequality. And uh, for the mature industrialization, the inequality will be declining. So that's uh, the kind of complicated. The repertoire and the speaker from the first session of free to join the country that they would like to participate in in the second and third session. So I'm already starting to keep track of the time, starting off with the introduction of five minutes. There is not just the only industrialization for China because we have a market economy process to deregulation the economy and uh, to remove the special privileges that the plant economy provides and, uh, and everything. So, so for me, uh, Growth is very important, but why growth? Because in China, we have a serious market economy reform, market-oriented reform. First, to liberalize the price of products and the services in 1980s. And in 1990s, we have a security uh, market. So, state owned uh, company and uh, private company, they can seek, they can raise money from security markets. And uh, after 1998, uh, the privatization of housing reform, well, that, that is a, a very good start to. to to begin a, how, a housing market. So people, they have, have public housing, but now they have private housing. They are homeowners. Because they have homeowners, they have property rights of hope, and then can join the local governors at the grass level in urban area. So house, housing is a very important property for homeowners. So if you have a property in Beijing, comes like a Professor Feng, he's got a three apartments, so he's uh, more than a million. <laughs> at least uh, 10, 10 million. 10 million yuan, not a USA dollar. More than Hong Kong dollar. So he's wealthy people. Person is more wealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So house, housing market is very important. Recently, there is a developing very quickly. Uh, financial market is developing very quickly. So if you have uh, some opportunity to take part in the financial market, you will be very rich. And uh, that means if you join different part of the market, you will have different part of wealth. If you join the labor market, you can make money for yourself as your peasant. Because you are a very poor peasant, and then you move to the urban area, and you can make more money than you earn in rural area. So, and if you are in inside the system and move out and, uh, and uh, initiate a company to make some money, or even you take part in the securities markets, the housing markets, my classmate, he took part in the uh, housing market, he, he bought uh, uh, about eight apartments, so he's richer than Professor Xing Yuan. And another guy, she made some money from Hungary and then moved to China, she bought 26 apartments in Tianjin. <laughs> so he got uh, 100 million. <laughs> 
the, 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 this is the case. If you very actively to join the market, even the market, you can be wealthy. So that means the market or the market. Some teachers have several children. Yeah, give you opportunities. Many children. Yeah, but also another way regulated the for regulation curve. That means if you have privilege from the central government to you have a license to 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 establish a financial leasing company, you have license, right? And the, the Ministry of Commerce give you an opportunity to have a new financial leasing company. Financial leasing company means you bought some. A uh, machine or bother some very expensive machine to rent out to entrepreneurs. That's opportunity. But uh, uh, before the the financial leasing is legal, it is illegal to to rent out your. You cannot raise any money from your machine. So. So that's, uh, so that's the privilege from regulation. And even for Shenzhen, Shenzhen uh, uh, is a uh, special economic... Please turn to engage well. into more it's interactive very, sessions and discuss and you ask your questions. Get a license to, to move somebody's house and establish your building. That's a privilege. So if you got the privilege from the regulation sector, you will be wealthy, right? Uh, Xinyuan is not a market participator, but he got a privilege to take three apartments. So he is wealthy from privilege. And uh, this two curves. Can you give some questions? Uh, Can you give some questions? Okay. Questions. Okay, questions. <laughs> Well, uh, I have two very simple questions. Yeah. The first one is, uh, we all know, you know, the amazing uh, the economic growth of China during the last three decades. Yeah. Because of that, you know, he could uh, collect the three houses in his ownership. He has but, four. <laughs> but the problem is, you know, the dead bright side, dark side, is we all know rampant inequality in China. Yeah. So the question is, if you keep growing, even though I don't believe you keep growing like you know, eight to nine percent, or perhaps you know seven percent, six percent. Then, uh, still in that case, uh, do you believe it is going to improve inequality uh, distribution problem? That's first question. Second question is okay. But first question first. Yeah, first question. Shinya can answer because he's got a paper for uh, Chinese America. The problem of inequality in China that's a pseudo problem. Because government has many companies, if you privatize them, mm -hmm. there's no poverty in China. No poverty. Yeah, you are right. Poverty matters. It's a pseudo term in China. For, in back, for the mature phase of market economy, you will have, have equal identity before rule of law and before mature markets so will be equal. And uh, more and more. Shareholder. Yeah, yeah. Owner but if you have quotas to But buy, your idea of privatization yeah. is giving shares to the people without getting any money from them. So kind of free, freely giving shares to the people. That's your way of removing inequality. And uh, my question related to Rajin Sally's you know, remark this morning. He had a very much bold claim. Mao's, not you Mao, but you know, famous Mao. <laughs> Mao's idea of one party system doesn't fit with the market economy. And that means, you know, the China doesn't have any future. So, how do you assess his claim? No future? That is precisely what he said. In the current China, political system. Yeah, in the current political China, system. No, no, there is a, a mega state effect in China. So the China is so big, it, it itself is the biggest internal market in the world. Yeah. So China is future. And the China means the central kingdom. Central kingdom means if you have advantage of the development of morality, now of market economy, so you can have it in the central point of the world. <laughs> Next question. One, you spoke about the house ownership rights. Yeah. So what is the status of land ownership rights? Okay. For second question, with your permission. Second brief question is: We keep hearing sporadically about national security issues in 
Xinjiang, some of the provinces. Do you think that has any impact on your economic growth and inequality in the community? Uh, in terms of land property, right? Yes. Uh, in Beijing, Xinjiang has three apartments, but he has got three licenses for his three apartment housing. But in Zhejiang, I've got one apartment there. I, I bought it for my mother. So, and uh, I, I've got a two licenses. One is for land, and the one is for house. So, but only 70 years. That's a land lease. Land oh, okay, lease. Not a lease. You're trying to locate your own land. Okay. No provision of land whatsoever, nothing. But the house is privately owned. Yeah, but house, 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 house is property yeah. only refer to the house, not the land. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so behind the high Gini coefficient, mm -hmm. there's a housing uh, element. Because mm -hmm. most of Chinese uh, poor people, they have own houses. So the, this uh, income, uh, uh, income inequality uh, doesn't you know, come away with wealth inequality. What, what, what about farm, farmlands then? Also farm belong land. to villages. Oh, really just collective, collective property. Yeah. Collective like, property. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. And second issue on nation security. So that's the disadvantage for present to have their land. One last minute because, remaining. Uh, no market for Very farmland. Defense? Security. <laughs> Xinjiang, Tibet, or oh, Spratly yeah. Islands, your dispute with Korea or Japan or Taiwan. Do you think that would have any impact on the economy in the foreseeable future? We need federalism. Federalism, but uh, there's Federal, some, but the some no exit <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> But so federalism within China plus okay. non non uh, negotiation mechanism. Something like uh, what in USA that took place, civil war. Thank you. Thank you. Good presentation. I have a red book. Do you have Mao's red book? Please give us a I'm happy.